Cześć, witam Was serdecznie i zapraszam na kolejny odcinek Polityki Zagranicznej. Czyją stronę będą wspierać Indie w starciu Chin ze Stanami Zjednoczonymi? Dlaczego Indie wspomagają Federację Rosyjską kupując ropę? I dlaczego to prawdopodobnie nie są najbardziej odpowiednie pytania, jakie w kontekście Indii powinniśmy sobie zadawać? Dziś odcinek nieco w szczególnej formie, ponieważ chciałbym, żebyśmy Indie poznali nieco lepiej, ale poznali je z perspektywy przedstawiciela właśnie tego państwa. Zapraszam. Na początku przypomnę jednak, że w środę 26 października odbędzie się konferencja XTB Masterclass, gdzie będę miał przyjemność poprowadzić jeden z paneli dyskusyjnych. Całe wydarzenie zapowiada się naprawdę bardzo, bardzo ciekawie, a jeśli jesteście zainteresowani szczegółami, w opisie znajdziecie link, po którym znajdziecie znacznie więcej informacji. Zapraszam. Przypadek, w którym wysoki urzędnik jakiegoś państwa potrafi w sposób elokwentny i taki akademicki opisać swoją perspektywę na stosunki międzynarodowe i opisać rolę jego państwa w stosunkach międzynarodowych, nie jest specjalnie częsty. A w przypadku Indii, nie tylko odpowiada to na wielkie zapotrzebowanie, bo to państwo pozostaje spowite taką aurą tajemniczości, ale na dodatek ta wiedza podawana jest w języku angielskim. Nic więc tylko z tego czerpać, nic tylko uczyć się. Poznajcie ministra spraw zagranicznych Indii, doktora Jai Shankara. Subrahmaniam Jai Shankar, i tak wiem, że zapewne źle wymawiam to imię i nazwisko, jest ministrem spraw zagranicznych Indii od 2019 roku, ale karierę w dyplomacji zaczął w 1977 roku. Był m.in. ambasadorem w Chinach i w Stanach Zjednoczonych, więc mówimy o człowieku z wielkim doświadczeniem i może by niepotrzebnie nie przedłużać. Posłuchajcie proszę fragmentów wystąpienia ministra z konferencji Globsek z Bratysławy z czerwca tego roku. You know, somewhere... Europe has to grow out of the mindset that Europe's problems are the world's problems, but the world's problems are not Europe's problems. That it's, if it is you, it's yours. If it is me, it's ours. I think that's something, uh, and I see, you know, reflections of that. Uh, again, in terms of, you know, you, there is a linkage today which is being made. You know, a linkage between China and India and what's happening in Ukraine. So come on, guys. I mean, China and India happened way before anything happened in Ukraine. So the Chinese don't need a precedent somewhere else in the world on how to, you know, engage us or not engage us or be difficult with us or not be difficult with us. So I, I, as I said, I mean, I just see this as frankly a not very clever argument, a very self-serving one. Uh, and. Uh, Uh, this idea that, you know, your grand strategy must be about how you will choose. I will do what, as all of us do, I will weigh the, the situation, you know, like uh, everybody, after all, what do, uh, how do countries eventually make decisions? They Mr. Find, Tashanka, there, there will uh, always be two axes at this point. I think it's an, it's an understood, accepted fact that you have the West, US-led, You have China as the next uh, potential axis. Where does India fit into this? But are you no, planning to not? The, no, aside? I'm sorry. That is exactly where I disagree with you. This is this is the construct you are trying to impose on me, and I don't accept it. I mean, I I don't feel I don't think it's necessary for me to join this axis or not. And if I'm not joining this, I must be with the other one. I don't accept that. I mean, I think I I am a, I'm one fifth of the world's population. I am but today the fifth or sixth largest economy in the world. Uh, I, uh, I mean, forget the history civilization bit, everybody knows that. But I, I think I'm entitled to have my own side, I'm entitled to weigh my own interests, make my own choices, and my choices will, uh, will not be cynical and transactional, but they will be a balance of my values and my interests. There is no country in the world which disregards its interests. You take any and all of the big challenges of the world, some part of the answer either comes out of India, can be contributed to India. And again, I, I, I hate to say, you know, come, it's a bit like a broken record, but look, a lot of things are happening outside uh, Europe. Uh, we have, partly because of climate change, for a lot of humanitarian, natural disasters, humanitarian responses in our part of the world today. Uh, a lot of people look to us to help out. The days when they expected Europe to come, which 
Europe did at the 2004 tsunami. The difference today is nobody's even thinking of that anymore. So the world is changing, new players are coming, new capabilities are coming, but a new agenda must come. The world cannot be that eurocentric as it used to be in the past. Świat nie może być tak europocentryczny, a czasy, w których problemy Europy są problemami świata, ale problemy świata nie są problemami Europy, dobiegł końca. Brzmi to nieco dosadnie. Co Indie myślą o Europie, a co myślą o sobie? My sense where Europe is concerned is, uh, in many ways, because of NATO, because of the circumstances of the European Union, they were not directly involved in hard security challenges, okay? Mm -hmm. So, I don't want to call it a bubble, but let us say they've had a more comfortable recent past than many other True. geographies. When they are confronted with such a situation, uh, their, uh, their uh, level of emotion and uh, their level of, uh, I would say, uh, agitation at this point of time, it, it almost makes them sort of feel, you know, there can be one point of view and that's our point of view and therefore that inclination to think, okay, here's somebody else who has a different history and different interests and therefore should I approach him in a different way, perhaps that is not so, so well developed. I think this uh, experience in a way uh, uh, would, would uh, actually connect them much more uh, to other parts of the world. So I, I think you will see a very uh, different sense of European uh, diplomacy uh, which will uh, come out of it. Uh, it's very important for us to be independent and self-confident. Is if we want to get the best out of the world for India, we must have that ability to look at a situation, uh, look at it very clinically, assess our interests, pick our course of action. Now, it will not be constant. There will be issues, you know, where I may agree with country X or uh, a group Y more than I would others. So, uh, it will in some senses appear inconsistent, mm -hmm. but inconsistency in that is a subset of independence uh, there. And, and I think we should not allow that mind game to be played that, you know, somewhere you are, you are an outlier, you are not in sync with the world, etc. That's very hegemonic, you know. That's like saying if you're not with us, you know. You're against us. No, <laughs> you, you, are, you are sort of out of the mainstream. Mm. I, I don't think people are necessarily saying today on some issues. The pressure is not for us or against us. Mm. The pressure is, you know, you really should be with us because you're, you're missing out on something, it's not, you know, it's not right or... Uh, there are very nuanced ways of developing that argument. No i oczywiście rosyjska agresja na Ukrainę. Jaka tutaj jest perspektywa Indii? Dlaczego zdaniem Jai Shankara kupowanie rosyjskiej ropy nie jest wspieraniem Moskwy? To India and Russia. We have really a long-standing relationship with Russia. Uh, a relationship that has certainly served our interests well. Uh, uh, and uh, 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 when, when uh, you asked about the uh, military equipment issue, uh, we have, as you know, a substantial inventory of Ru Soviet and Russian origin weapons. Uh, and that inventory actually grew for a variety of reasons you know, the merits of the weapon systems themselves, but also because uh, for, a, uh, for a multiple decades, uh, Western countries did not supply, uh, uh, supply uh, weapons to India, uh, and in fact saw a military dictatorship next to us as the preferred partner. So uh, I think we all in international politics deal with what we have. Uh, we made the new lot of the new package uh, of sanctions. Now, the package is designed in a way in which consideration has been given to the welfare of the population. So, you know, uh, pipelines have a certain carve out. Uh, so, and timelines have been given. It's not like tomorrow morning, everything's going to be cut off. So, I, people need to understand, if you can be considerate of yourself, surely you can be considerate of other people. So if a Europe says, uh, look, uh, we have to manage it in a way in which its impact 
on my economy is not traumatic. Uh, uh, that that uh, freedom or that choice should exist for other people as well. Now, in terms of uh, our oil purchases, we don't send people out there saying go buy Russian oil. We send people out there saying go buy oil. Now, you buy the best oil you can in the market. Uh, so, I, I mean, I don't want to sound argumentative, but then tell me if buying Russian gas is not funding the war? I mean, why is it, it's only Indian money and uh, oil coming to India which funds, but it's not gas coming to Europe which funds? I mean, look, somewhere, I mean, let's, let's be a little even-handed out here. I, if if uh, countries in Europe and the West and the United States are so concerned, why don't they allow Iranian oil to come into the market? Why don't they allow Venezuelan oil to come into the market? I mean, they've squeezed every other source of oil we have. And then say, okay, guys, you must not go into the market and guess the best deal for your people. I don't think that's a very fair approach. To, co zaprezentowałem Wam w tym materiale, to naprawdę jest zaledwie skromny wycinek z całej kopalni ciekawych obserwacji na temat Indii, na temat świata autorstwa tamtejszego ministra spraw zagranicznych. Wycinek, który mam nadzieję rozbudzi Waszą ciekawość. W opisie filmu znajdziecie całą serię linków do różnych wystąpień Jai Shankara, czy to wykładów, czy to wywiadów różnego typu wystąpień, naprawdę warto poświęcić mu trochę więcej czasu. I nie chodzi tutaj o to, by wyłapywać co z czym się zgadzamy, bądź się nie zgadzamy. Nie zawsze chodzi o to, by w ten sposób patrzeć na świat. Chodzi o to, by dowiedzieć się czegoś, by zyskać nową perspektywę. A w tym wypadku jest to perspektywa państwa, które zamieszkuje trzy razy więcej ludzi niż całą Unię Europejską. Państwa, które z całą pewnością będzie w świecie przyszłości odgrywać istotniejszą rolę. W świecie przyszłości, który prawdopodobnie będzie znacznie mniej europocentryczny. Serdecznie dziękuję Wam za uwagę. Mam nadzieję, że to było ciekawie spędzone kilkanaście minut. Dziękuję Wam za uwagę. Trzymajcie się i do zobaczenia.